Hello everyone. In a previous video, we built an example multi-tenant application using the database per tenant approach. We were able to switch between different tenants by updating the database configuration and using the tenant specific database. I quickly explained why we use the purge method to clear the current connection instance and create a new one before switching to the new tenant. In this video, I'm going to explain this in more detail. If you are at tenant1 and setting a cache key called user to the value Muhammad and then switch to tenant2 and change that same key and use the value Jane instead, you would expect to always get the value as Muhammad when you are at tenant1 and the value at Jane at tenant2. If we run this code now to see the value stored in the cache, we can see the value is Jane. But we are not actually switching between tenants right now, so let's do that. So here I switch to tenant with id1 first and then call the configure method and set it as the current tenant, then set the cache key to the value Muhammad. Then switch to tenant2 and set the cache key to the value Jane. We are now on tenant2, so we would expect the value of the user cache key to be Jane because we set it to Jane on tenant2. And that's what we get. But if we switch to tenant1, we expect the user value to be Muhammad. So let's try that, but we are still getting Jane. That's because we are using the same cache store and the same key to store two values. So the second call to the cache put method overrode the value of the user key. If we go to the cache.php configuration file and scroll down to the prefix attribute, we can see that we can use this attribute and set a different prefix for each tenant to be able to get different values for the same key. So Laravel is going to prebend this prefix to each of your cache keys by default. So let's do that and head to tenant.php and update our configure method. We will use the tenant ID as a prefix for all our cache keys. Now let's go back to our code again and run the code. And we expect because we are at tenant one now, we should get the value as Muhammad. So let's run the code, but we are still getting Jane. And to understand why this is happening, let's check the cache manager class in our Laravel installation. If we scroll to the store method, which is the method called by Laravel to create the cache instance, we can see that when the cache instance is created the first time, it's stored in a local cache in this cache manager class. If we take a look at this get method, we can see that it first checks if we have a cache instance already stored in the local cache of the cache manager class. And if we have that instance already, we will not resolve a new instance. We will return the existing instance. And that's why even though we updated the configuration for the cache prefix, we are not getting the expected result because we are basically using the same old instance with the same old prefix. What we want to do is to find a way to clear that cache instance from the local cache of the cache manager class. So the next time Laravel tries to get a cache instance, it's going to resolve a new one. And luckily the cache manager had a method called forget driver. We can provide a name for a cache connection or driver and it's going to unset this from the local cache. So let's go back to our tenant.php class and call this method. So we resolved the cache manager from the container and called the forget driver method and passed the cache connection that we are using and we're currently using the default connection. So we just grab it from the configurations. If we go back to test what we did and run the code, we are currently getting Muhammad when the tenant is one because now each cache key is prefixed with the tenant ID. So they are basically two different cache keys. And when we are at tenant one, we are getting the value for the user key prefixed by the tenant ID. If we switch to tenant two here and run the code, we are getting Jane because the value in tenant two is set to Jane. So I hope by now you understand why we called the purge method here. 
we can actually remove this completely because since we are removing the connection instance from the local cache next time laravel wants a connection a database connection instance it's going to create a new one because it won't find one existing in the local cache and while i was recording this video i noticed that we have the purge method in the database manager but the method that does the same thing is called forget driver in the cache manager class so I went ahead and created a pull request for Laravel 8.x where I added a purge method to all the connection managers. So starting Laravel 8, you would be able to call the purge method on the cache manager as well. So from now on, if you are modifying your application configuration in runtime, make sure you flush any local cache so you get what you expect. That includes the cached instance stored in the mail manager and the broadcasting manager and the queue manager and so on. So I hope you found this video useful and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer all the questions. Thank you and have a great day.